Hello and welcome to another episode here on the War of the Rebellion channel. Today we are going to start a new series where we are going to explore material I covered in my book Liberty and Slavery published by Alice U Press. In the series we are going to look at a number of individuals, migrants from Austria, Hungary, Poland, Germany and Ireland and how they experienced European revolutionary events, how they came to the United States and witnessed the war of the rebellion and in a few cases also what they did after the war of the rebellion. When Thomas Francis Mayer arrived in the United States, thousands of people greeted this hero of the Irish cause. But initially, Mayer doesn't want to be a public figure, a celebrity involved in politics. He is, however, concerned about the direction of the United States. He looks at different opportunities. For example, to think about the expansionism that is ravishing through the United States, going west into Kansas, California, but also south. He's starting to talk about opportunities in Costa Rica, for example, which he briefly visits, establishing an Irish settlement there. In New York, he creates a citizen, a newspaper. But for the most part, he's quiet during the 1850s. When the War of the Rebellion begins, Mayer helps to create a unit of Irishmen in New York City, which becomes the 69th New York, an anchor of what eventually becomes known as the Irish Brigade. While Mayer sides with the United States and fights in the US Army against her rebel forces, he has a lot of sympathies for the South. He understands some of their grievances. But when the war starts, it comes down to him, to a republic that gave him asylum. And he wants to defend that republic. He believes that a stronger United States, united United States, will be better for the Irish Republic in future than a divided United States split in two. As he's recruiting man, to go out into their first battle, it is Mayer who eventually leads the Irish Brigade into battle. Mayer looks at the work African-American soldiers do and realizes that that fight they're doing for the United States and for their own freedom deserves them getting citizenship rights, freedom, civil liberties, Something, of course, the United States will fall short on, unfortunately. It is after the bloody engagements at Fredericksburg and Chancellorsville that Mayer decides to resign his commission, temporarily leaving the Irish Brigade because it's not receiving sufficient replacements. 
and being a shadow of its former self. He does not remain out of the service for long, and by the fall of 1864 he returns to the force and is in Tennessee. But dealing with guerrillas is not something he enjoys, and he seeks a different appointment. Mayer is a complicated character. Many people remember and see him from that god-awful movie Gods and Generals and him leading the Irish Brigade. But Mayer is more than that. Yes, he led the Irish Brigade, but he was a revolutionary in Ireland who brought that revolutionary feeling, persona and publicity to the United States becomes an anchor in the Irish society, and it is that that gives him that strong place in the United States upon which he will build his career. But he is torn, and when he sides with the United States, it's both for the United States, issues within the United States, but also issues related to Ireland's future that he has in mind. If these brief episodes sparked your interest about the individuals covered, please consider not only subscribing and liking this channel, commenting on this episode, but also looking into purchasing my book, Liberty and Slavery, published by Alice U. Pratt.